Okay, so here we have a Mac Pro 2,1. Okay, so it's basically the same as a Mac Pro 1,1, i.e. the first Intel Mac Pro, sometimes referred to as a cheese grater because of this. Um, this came out, I think, 2007, 2008, something like that. It's actually a really amazing computer from an engineering point of view all of these mac pros are and right now on ebay they're basically nothing and there's a reason for that and it's apple apple have basically crippled this machine for no good reason it still has okay hardware it's still pretty decent so there's a couple of ways around um sort of using this uh we could put like um windows 11 we could do that or we could put Linux, and that's what I'm going to try. I'm going to put Linux on this. Uh, my kids are pretty switched on. They'll be able to figure out how to get on Minecraft using Linux anyway. All right, so no problem there. Right, so what are the challenges that we might expect to see? Well, there is one kind of weird thing on these machines, and I think that's why they were sort of discontinued quite quickly. Like... I mentioned earlier on, this is a Mac Pro 2.1, which is essentially just an upgraded version of the 1.1. One one. Uh, it was only on the market for about a year and a half, I think, before they released what is known as the Mac Pro 3.1, which is a very good machine if you can find one. 3.14151, they're not bad. Uh, if you can find one for cheap. This one, for some strange reason, has a 64-bit operating system. It has a 64-bit architecture, but the EFI, which is kind of like the um, Mac equivalent of your BIOS, if you're coming from a sort of Windows or linux -y world, uh, or legacy at least, um, is only 32-bit. So I think the challenge I'm going to find is that when I try to boot into an installer, the installer is going to see the machine as a 32-bit machine and therefore only let me install a 32-bit OS. Uh, I don't know if that will be uh, how this finishes or if it will get around that and we'll be able to install 64-bit OS. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to pause the video there and then go away and get some equipment and we will start getting Linux uh, Mint on here. Okay, so the first step is obviously to get Linux, uh, the version you want. Um, I, like I said, I'm going to use uh, Linux Mint. Okay, so let me just zoom in there. Um, ooh, that doesn't look very nice. Okay, well anyway, I'm going to use Linux Mint Cinnamon. So this is uh, a very new OS, and as you can see, it's 64-bit ISO, so I'm going to see if this actually works. Um, uh, quick Google search because I couldn't remember what the name of the program was that I need to create a bootable USB uh, image. So um, we're going to use Etcher. Okay, so I'm on Balena Etcher. Okay, and I have just downloaded Etcher for Mac OS. Okay, so let's get this Etcher on here. I've got a USB stick in there now. Oh no. And we need 10.11. To create this bootable USB stick, I think I'm going to need another Mac. A few moments later. Okay, so in the time that, in that cut screen, I have had a bit of a nightmare with this. It's actually a lot harder than I anticipated. Um, Apple, I, I believe it's Apple's fault, have really made this uh, much tougher than it needed to be. Um, I've tried several USB sticks, I've tried 32-bit images, I've tried 64-bit images, different USB ports, I'm not getting anywhere with it, uh, I just can't see it in the uh, at, at boot time. Some research I've been doing suggests it might be that it seems that at some point someone has changed the graphics card in this Mac, so um, the one that's in there I, I think they, there isn't the drivers, I think, for the boot sequence. So I can't actually see when it's going through the boot screen. So I can't choose to manually change the startup disk. 
Uh, in the end, what I've done is I've just taken one of the disks out of this machine, taken it to a different machine, installed Linux Mint, a 64-bit version on there, and I've connected it back up. I'm now going to see if I can find um, instructions on how I can manually change my startup disk. Now there is a startup disk manager, okay, so here it is here, but as you can see, oh, I think we well, can't really see, but um, I can still only see Mac OS R10.7. So I still can't see my other disk. In fact, when this machine booted up with the new disk in it, or the um, the old disk with the new operating system on it, uh, I was prompted with a notification that the computer can't read that disk. So it looks like I've got a bit more troubleshooting to do, and this is actually taking all day long so far, so um, phew, it's, it's a bit of a challenge, I, I'll be honest with you, but I think, um, I think we have a route forward. So let me see if I can do a little bit more troubleshooting, and then I'll pick up the video again shortly. A few moments later. Okay, so it's actually been a few days and you may notice from the slightly different setting that we're in a different place and that's because I massively underestimated the complexity in getting Linux on this machine. Um, a little bit of uh, research, I think the problem is the graphics card. It looks like the graphics card was replaced at some point earlier in its life. Unfortunately, the graphics card that is in there doesn't support the boot sequence or the 32-bit EFI doesn't have the right drivers to access that graphics card. I'm unable to get into a, a, a boot screen, so that's why I can't get the installer up. That's why, um, well, I've tried quite a few things in this sort of downtime period, actually. One of the things I've tried was taking out the second hard drive, connecting it up to this machine, very dusty old Windows computer, so my first plan was to just put Linux on the second disk and leave Mac OS alone in case they ever wanted it. So far, I've been unable to do that. So the second idea I had, or the plan, you know, I don't know, EFG, HRJK, I don't know where we're up to now, uh, was to take the one booting disk, the Mac OS disk, split that into two partitions and install Linux onto that. Again, I brought the disk in here, installed Linux on that machine, put it back in there, cannot get it to boot. And it could be several reasons for that. It could be that I haven't put um, like a bootloader on that disk, or it may just be that I cannot see the boot screen. So I cannot get into any kind of, you know, you hold down on the Mac, you hold down the option key, and then you can get into the uh, boot screen. You can choose which disk you wanna, which image you want to boot from. I just can't see that. So what I've done is I've ordered another graphics card off eBay. Um, that will, I believe, allow me to see the boot sequence. But for now, let's just have a quick look at this because it's actually, it is such an amazing machine. It's such a shame that it's basically crippled by its current situation. And I think earlier on, I said something like, you know, Apple have deliberately crippled this and they have by not releasing the OSs for it, but it's a little bit more complex than that. Okay, so we're back in Mac OS. Again, nothing's changed about this Mac. We're still, we're still on 10.7.5, same processors, same RAM. Everything is the same. So the graphics card, it is an NVIDIA Quattro FX 380 with 256 MB. Now, that sounds pretty rubbish to me, but then I suppose this was a long. This came out a long time ago. Maybe that wasn't pretty rubbish. But just to show like the power of this machine, obviously we still have exactly the same issues we had before. So we'll open Google Chrome again. So a test of this before when it's just running Mac OS uh, was YouTube Kids. So even though I can get on things like you know I can get on Google, I can get on most websites because I've got the proxy server dealing with the SSL situation. Um, I still can't get onto some websites. So, YouTube for kids. As this is what my children want to watch. Uh, and we have the need to update the browser message. What I've done is I've actually installed an old version of VMware. Now, my very first Mac was from around about the same age as this, although not as expensive as a Mac Pro, it was a MacBook. 
and I needed Windows for something, so I bought VMware Fusion. So I had a license, and luckily I found a downloader that still works for this old piece of software. What I've done here is I've installed um, a 64-bit Linux. Now, at the moment, the resolution is set to about uh, 1440, I think. So uh, it looks nice in this window, but if I make it full screen, it does look a little bit pixely. I'll just give it a second. Okay, but basically we now have a full, you know, basically a full Linux environment and it works fine. It really does. It's quite impressive what this machine is capable of. Okay, so we are running on what we call a hypervisor. So we are losing some of our system resources to, uh, to run the VMware sort of on top and macOS and all of that kind of stuff. But here we are inside uh, Linux running on that Mac. Okay, and now I'm going to go to YouTube Kids. All right, so we've now got YouTube Kids working. I, I you know, if I was, uh, if I wanted to set this up, I could do. This would work fine. Um, but it, it's just to show that the machine has all the grunt to get this through. You know, there's there's nothing wrong with this machine. It's completely fine. I suppose it's a little bit blocky, but I think that's the hypervisor. I think actually the graphics card I'm buying has got like twice the RAM, so I think it'll be quite a big improvement anyway, but we just need to wait for that to turn up. And then we'll try installing Linux directly to the to the metal. Um, another problem on this machine that might be slowing things down is this has still got old fashioned spinning disks, which again is common for a machine of this age. So at some point we might swap one of those out and stick um, an SSD drive on there. We can also put more RAM in here. Um, this has eight gig maximum officially it supports is 32 gig. Eight gig RAM is probably gonna be enough. Might, we might go for 16, but I think eight is enough. Uh, right now we're just waiting for the graphics card and we'll move on to installing Linux to the tin. Like I say, this works fine. There's a little bit of a delay. You can probably see that. If it's not like buttery smooth, but it's pretty good. It's pretty good.